Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Aaron, if you're new here, and if you are a current subscriber, return to watch my videos, especially if you're returning to watch my Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power episode reviews. Wow, that's a lot to say. I really do appreciate that. So, episode 8, the season finale of season 1 of the Rings of Power. I'm sorry for getting to this video late. I was sick. I... I... Okay, so... The episodes come out Fridays, right? Apparently Thursday night when it switches over to Friday, like at 12 a.m. midnight, for those of you who get confused like I do, that's exactly when the next episode comes out. So I stayed up and I watched it and I was like, I'll do the review tomorrow. I'm going to collect my thoughts in the morning and then I'll do my review. I woke up the next morning and I could not talk. My throat was in so much pain. So I was like, you know, I'll just have to postpone it a little. But I rewatched the episode today just to kind of refresh. These are my thoughts on the season finale. All right, so this episode opens straight away with the stranger. Now in the last episode, he went off on his own and then the Harfoots, Nori, Poppy, the mom, and stupid Sadduck, they went off after him to go like help him find his way to the stars or something with this map that he's so concerned about. Starts off right there and he's in the woods and kind of lost, doesn't know what's going on. And then he sees what he thinks is a hobbit. He's like chasing after it and because he can't like talk, you know, for some reason, all of a sudden it gets revealed that it's these three like witch chicks and they're like devoted to bringing Sauron into the world to take over Middle Earth or something. It's never really explained too much. They bow before him and say, we're here to worship you, Lord Sauron. And then it shows his face like he's confused. And then it cuts to the opening credits. And I thought, oh, okay, well. That was quick. I guess he's Sauron, and I guess they just want to get rid of that whole aspect of trying to figure this out right from the beginning. Kind of catch everyone off guard, which is a good strategy, but at the same time, I'm like, that almost feels too on the nose. But you think these witches would know who Sauron is? The fact that they say he is, and they think he is, you know, he probably is. You have the opening credits, and then it opens up in Elfville or wherever where Halbrand was taken by Galadriel to heal his wounds because they need elvish medicine because the wounds are so bad. And she meets Elrond, and Elrond, if you remember, last time he saw her, she was kind of getting more or less banished from Middle-earth. So he sees her and he's like, oh, I'm so happy to see you, but like, what are you doing here? So they talk for a little bit and whatnot. Then it kind of like breaks off into this small part with Celebrimbor trying to figure out like how do I use this little bit of Mithril or Mithril however you say it to make this project which we're never really told what the project is exactly but he's got like something like this big you know he needs a lot more that's what she said <laughs> So then Halbrand, I guess, is up and walking around because he's healed enough to do so. And he talks to Celebrimbor and he's like, you know, back where I came from, I worked under a smith and he always talked about you and he said you were the greatest. And they're like kind of chatting and stuff. And then he's like, have you thought about maybe combining the Mithril with some sort of alloy to kind of stretch it out? And then Celebrimbor is like, that's a very astute idea or something ridiculous. Like you're telling me that Celebrimbor, who is like the ultimate smith in Middle Earth, definitely in all of Elven Kingdom, he never thought of this. It's just like, it seemed so weird. Make Celebrimbor out to be like really just almost stupid. Then I'm like, you know, they're spending a lot of time on Halbrand here. And then Halbrand seems a little too happy to be up and walking around. And I guess, you know, that makes sense that he would be happy because he almost died. He gets to see this famous Celebrimbor who he's heard about since he was a child. I get that, but there was just something that seemed off. And immediately I started thinking, I bet he's Sauron. 
and I bet the stranger isn't. Or it could be that maybe he's, because he's magic, like Sauron has a lot of magic and dark power, maybe he's like somehow transferring back and forth between the two of them. I really wasn't sure, but I was not sold on the theory that the stranger was Sauron anymore. Then we get taken back to the witches trying to tell the stranger and show him that he is Sauron. He just needs to remember who he is. He gets a little agitated and they get agitated. So the main witch, she like starts using her powers on him. And we actually see a lot of magic in this episode, which was actually pretty cool. I thought it was well done and very interesting visually to watch. But she's about to like totally kick his ass and all of a sudden gets hit in the head by rocks because you know the harfoots are up around her in the trees throwing stones at her and i gotta say i hate that i always hated that in movies where like something was gonna happen and then these kids start throwing stones or pine cones or apples at the main bad guy and it's like this bad guy just went through battle and war with knives and guns and getting beat to hell and he's going after someone and you think throwing a rock or an apple is really gonna like make him stop it's just i always found that stupid and they did it here and i was like oh you've got to be kidding me it fits because it's the harfoots and everything they do is just retarculous so then this one uh which her thing is like she's good at throwing knives or daggers so she's like throwing them at people and stuff she throws it at someone and she misses and it hits sadik and I am not making this up, and I know it makes me seem like a bad person. I was alone in the room watching this show, and I actually said, yes, finally. And I'm like, please die, please die, please die. <laughs> I guess I just made myself look like a horrible person to anyone who watches this video. But, oh well. Anyhow, Nori gives the staff of one of the witches to the stranger and is like you can be good it's about what you choose to be and so he gets up and he stops the one witch from burning the three other harfoots because she's like blowing fire out of her mouth using her hand it was actually a very cool scene i loved it he uses some magic and you can see he's like super powerful all of a sudden he speaks english He's like, I banish you back to the shadows. And he like does something with this staff and they like turn into these like skeleton ghost type of things. They looked a lot like the Nazgul, which I liked. I thought that looked really cool. And then they turned into these butterfly moth like things and then like disintegrated. And then the staff disintegrated in the stranger's hand. And I'm like... He's obviously not Sauron, which means Halbrand is Sauron. The stranger, I'm thinking, has got to be Gandalf. But I was like, I wonder if this is him. And the fact that he said, I ban you back to the shadows, is very similar to one of, or a few lines he says in the original trilogy. I was like, okay, that could just be kind of like a nod to the audience and the fans that this guy is a wizard of some sort. But then when the skeletons turned into these moths, I'm like, that's really specific. We see multiple times in The Hobbit and in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Gandalf talking to like butterflies and moths and using them as like messengers. I'm thinking maybe that's just another hint that he is Gandalf. I could be totally wrong, but it's fun to speculate. Oh, and Sadok dies. Finally. Like, I'm totally fine with just starting to eliminate these Harfoots. Just go along and find the most creative ways for them to die, because I am so done with them. It was a touching scene, though, as much as I wanted him to die, and was happy that he did die. I did like the way it was done, how he wanted to see one last sunrise as he died. Then we get a scene on one of the boats returning to Numenor and Elindale is on there and he's like the queen regent's like right hand man now. I don't think he really was before but now he's like you know 
there and like always by her side because she's blind, right? And they have this very great emotional scene together. And what I loved about this scene is they kept it completely non-romantic. There was no attraction whatsoever. And I just really like that because I'm so tired of like forced attraction between a male and a female character to kind of start a romance slot or to get the audience like, oh, will they, won't they type of thing? Because it's just so unnecessary. They just show that they were on the same team, on the same side. They were part of the faithful and trying to return Numenor to the ways of the past the way it should be and that they confide in each other and they they trust each other and I just I thought that scene was really really well done it's pretty short actually but I was very happy with that in this episode we're finally getting some more scenes that hold emotional weight and I really liked that so then we get to the big reveal that Halbrand is Sauron now I liked the reveal but it's so obvious but I did like the acting in this scene because you see him go from this like hurt unsure of himself cocky putting on a mask of being confident when he's really not and everything we've seen this whole season and you see that immediately change and you see that he's calculating and he's bad obviously and he is extremely confident and everything before was just this giant act. The actor did a fantastic job. So that was great. And the, the dialogue in this scene with him and Galadriel and everything that happens, because he puts her in like this like trance vision dreams like state and shows her things. And I just I liked it. I I really did. Sauron basically tells Galadriel join me, be at my side. It's like this Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker moment. She's like, no, I'll never be part of your plan. I will not give in to the darkness. All of a sudden she wakes up like feeling like she's drowning and she's like in this riverbed or whatever. Sauron's gone. She runs back to the tower and is like, if Halbron ever comes here again, he's not welcome here. Get rid of him. So, and then she's like, yeah, I think we should make three rings. Because two divides, but three. What was it? Binds together or something silly. Then we go back to the Harfoots. Oh my god. Nori decides to leave her family and go help. Let's call him Gandalf. I'm just going to call him Gandalf for now. Find what he's looking for with this map of the stars. I really don't know what's going on there. But she's like, I should go with him, you know? And so she does. And I was like, okay, this is great. Because that means hopefully in the next season, she's going to be just off with him. And it's not going to be going to the whole Harfoot caravan. Because that storyline is so boring. I'm liking the setup here. But then it just gets dragged out for so long. Like... Oh, goodbye. We love you. Do you have this pact? Do you have this? Oh, we we trust you. And all this, like, emotional stuff that I didn't care for. So, finally, she leaves and she goes off with Gandalf on their adventure. Then it cuts back to the rings. It shows the rings being forged. I really liked this scene. I thought it looked really cool. There's an Easter egg. When the hot metal is in its liquid state, you see it form into the eye of Sauron. And I really like that touch. It's very brief, but it looks awesome. We also get shown that Elrond knows something's up with Halbrand. And something is up with Galadriel and that whole relationship. So he's sensing something's going on, but he promised Galadriel that he would trust her and so he doesn't say anything but they both know that each other knows that they know if you get what I know but they both know that each other knows that they know yeah something like that then the last shot of the episode shows Sauron 
looking out over Mordor and Mount Doom, and it's an amazing shot. I absolutely loved this scene. It sets up the next season perfectly. It ends with the villain. We know who the villain is now. He's no longer hiding and manipulating people. He's out in the open and he's traveled to Mordor, which is where, as you know, is where all this evil is. And he makes his army of orcs and Urukai and all that. So I really liked it. And visually it looked amazing. You see Mount Doom in the background or foreground or whatever, depending on what angle and it's erupting still and you see the ground is all burnt for miles you see these clouds like swirling over the volcano and there's lightning and stuff and i'm like this is one of the best ways to end a season and i thought it was awesome overall i thought this episode was really good watching it a second time i still enjoyed it so that's good, because I was thinking, does this show have that rewatchability factor? And the season finale episode definitely does. I'm not going to rate the series yet, because I want to do a full rewatch, and then do a full season review. Uh, six to eight minute, really condensed review of the season, and my thoughts and rating for it. So make sure you subscribe to my channel, so that when I do eventually do that video, you don't miss it. All right, sorry this video was so long. Um, there's just so much to talk about in this episode, so I figured, you know what? I'm not gonna try and condense this down to six minutes. I'm gonna talk about what I wanna talk about, and I'll do the condensing for the main season review. So if you stuck through it, I really do appreciate it. What were your thoughts on the season finale? If you picked up on something I didn't, any Easter eggs or anything, or you disagree with my opinion on something, leave a comment. I'd be very interested in reading it. As always, if you'd like this video and subscribe, I would very much appreciate it. Also, make sure you check out my Middle Earth playlist, as I have all my reviews for this whole season, and the reviews for the original trilogy, videos of crafts I've made, and little projects, and an unboxing of Andoral and stuff like that. So if you like Middle Earth and you like that kind of stuff, make sure you check it out. All right, thanks for watching all these episodes. I hope you did. Anyhow, I do appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.